In this video, we'll show you how to replace your driver's side catalytic converter on this Mercury Grand Marquis between the year ranges of 2003 and 2011. The catalytic converter will be located underneath the driver's side of your vehicle. Let's get started. Let's make our way underneath the driver's side of the vehicle. We're going to be looking for the blue O2 sensor connector on this. It's located extremely close to your transmission. To disconnect this, you'll find that you have a squeeze tab right where my index finger is. Carefully squeeze that in and disconnect this. Every time you disconnect an electrical connector, take a peek. If you see any funny colors, it's corrosion. We'll set this aside. Now let's remove the O2 sensor from the catalytic converter pipe. To remove this, you want to use an O2 sensor socket and a 3 8 drive ratchet. It's important to make sure you don't twist up your O2 sensor wires too many times. You don't want to damage them. You will be reusing the O2 sensor. Remove your O2 sensor, give it a quick inspection, set it aside. Now we can follow the catalytic converter pipe to where it connects onto your Y pipe. You're going to find that you have two mounting bolts with some nuts on the forward side. Use a 14 millimeter socket to remove each of those bolts. Something to pay attention to is on the back side of the flange here, you have a vibration dampener with a bracket that mounts with those same bolts. Now that I have this one out of here, I'll do the same to the other. When this is coming out, you want to be extremely careful that the vibration dampener does not fall down and potentially hurt you. I'll hold that vibration dampener. The next thing we'll do is clean up this flange on the vibration dampener on both sides, making sure that we remove any of the existing debris. That looks better. Continue on to the front of the catalytic converter pipe. You'll find that you have two 15 millimeter headed nuts holding the catalytic converter to your exhaust manifold. As you remove the pair, keep in mind, these are the last things holding this pipe in place. Don't let this fall and hurt you. Now I'll hold the pipe while I continue with my last mounting nut. Carefully remove the pipe from the vehicle. There it is friends. Now let's move along to cleaning our flanges. We'll start with the manifold. The area that you need to pay attention to for the manifold flange is not the flat areas with the studs. It's this beveled area that protrudes outward. Go ahead and lightly sand this down and give it a close inspection. Make sure it's not rotted or pitted in any way. If it is, you're going to have to take care of that. Let's give this a quick feel. Feels nice and smooth. I feel confident we should get a good seal here. Let's move to our rearward pipe. As far as the rearward flange, we want to make sure that this is as smooth and flat as possible. Commonly on these, you're going to find that you still have some existing gasket residue on here and or a little bit of rot buildup. It's important to make sure you scrape that off and sand it down.
Once you have the flange as smooth as possible, pay attention to your mounting holes as well. You want to make sure that's clean and free of any debris. You could try using a bore brush. Okay friends, let's get ready for our installation. Take your catalytic converter pipe and put it in place along the front flange area. We're going to slide that flange right up onto those two mounting studs and then start on our mounting nuts. Make your way to the back. Now we can continue on with our gasket. We'll put this in between our Y pipe and our catalytic converter. Put our mounting bolt through here. That's going to go all the way through that rearward flange. We'll do the same for the top, just swing that up. With both of those through there, we'll install the vibration dampener as well. Slide that right over both those bolts. Start on each of your mounting nuts. With everything in place, let's tighten these up. On our bolts and nuts, we're using a 14 millimeter on both sides. Once these are snug, torque them to 30 foot pounds. Make your way to the forward flange mounting nuts. We'll use a 15 millimeter to tighten each of these. Make sure when you're tightening them, you go equally from side to side. You don't want this flange sitting at an angle. You're not gonna get a good seal. All we need to do is snug these and then we'll bottom them out to 30 foot pounds. Now we can install our O2 sensor. You want to make sure you start this in by hand into the pipe. That way there you're sure you're not going to cross thread it into place. Once you have it started in, go ahead and snug it up and then torque it to 30 foot pounds. While we're doing this, make sure that you do not twist your wires. Connect in your O2 sensor wiring. Press that in. Feel for a click. Give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Make sure you tuck the wiring away so there's no way it can get damaged. Okay friends, we've got our car back together. At this point, you can go ahead and climb out from underneath here. Start up the vehicle, let it run for a little while. Make sure you don't have a check engine light and no exhaust leak. Aside from that, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.